Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. Well, it's August and that means that we have access to the 2021 Release Wave 2 features. You can turn this on in your sandbox environment and kind of play around with the new features and see how everything is working. So I'm going to do a couple of videos and articles about the new features in the different modules. And in the first video, part one, this guy here, we're going to discuss some of the generic updates to Dynamics 365. And mainly it's about the experience in the model driven app. So sit back, grab some popcorn and enjoy. You now have the ability to edit the sitemap of your model-driven app in the Modern App Designer. So to access the Modern App Designer, you're going to need to navigate to make.powerapps.com and then you can do it from there. So I'll show you that in a second. Now, what we can do here on the sitemap is you can see here on the left hand side that these different sections are now collapsible right we couldn't do that earlier you would just get all of those navigation items on the sitemap so let me show you real quick where you can access that i'm going to go here into my environment and i'm going to go here to make.powerapps.com and then this is Let's say this is the app that I want to configure. You need to hover here over edit and then you see edit in preview. So this is still a preview feature. So you can click on this and then you can see on the left hand side, you can go to navigation. And when I click on navigation bar, unfortunately nothing happens yet, but this is where you can make that change once this rolls out. So I just wanted to show you that. And again, right, that's really the ability to make some of these groupings here collapsible. So that's what that is. Now, this is a very nice feature. I, I really love this. It, it will allow us to access multiple side panes directly from within the application, right? So if you're familiar with uh, Omnichannel for customer service, then you've seen that productivity pane on the left side, or I should say on the right side of that screen, and then you know exactly what I'm referring to. So even though this functionality is listed as part of the early release, I actually confirmed with Microsoft that at this time when I'm recording this video, this functionality is not yet available, but it's definitely something that's coming. So what I wanted to do here is at least show you a screenshot of one of those panes, right? Those side panes that we can now use directly from within the application. And as you may or may not know, so support for Internet Explorer has actually ended on August 17th for any users who are still running Internet Explorer to access the application, you're going to be seeing a notification on the top of your screen. And this is really to notify them that that support for Internet Explorer has ended, right? And you should use a different browser. You can obviously dismiss that warning, but the message is going to show up again every time when a new session starts, obviously when you're using Internet Explorer. And then admins of organizations who have users that access the application through Internet Explorer will also see a notification. That's what you see here. And it's again, right, stating that the support for Internet Explorer has ended and that users should switch to another browser. So as soon as there's no longer any users that access the application through Internet Explorer, the message will no longer show. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that per 2022 release wave one, Internet Explorer and the classic Edge browsers will actually be locked from accessing the unified interface app. So you got to make sure that all of your browsers are up to date. 
And this next feature might not be a big deal for a lot of people. I'm actually really glad to see that Microsoft is going to remove this Dynamics 365 custom app, right? It's that web client app from the app chooser in Dynamics 365. So that's that first one that you see on my screenshot, right? It's kind of marked a little bit of red in there. Uh, this is also part of the early release, but unfortunately when I checked it, the app was still present in the app chooser. So I'm just thinking that this might just go live after GA, which will be in October. And I also wanted to mention that Microsoft has actually renamed relevant search to Dataverse search. And in all of the 2021 release wave one, this will be the only global search option for all model driven apps in a production environment. So this basically means that that old categorized search option is no longer available in any of your production environments. So if you want to be able to access this in your sandboxes, according to the documentation, you should be able to do that. Now the relevant search will also be switched on by default, right? Prior to this release, you could actually turn off relevant search, which allowed us to use categorized search. So this option will no longer be available in this release. And then an added feature to Dataverse is or dataverse search i should say is the fact that we're going to be able to search through the file data type in dataverse which basically means that we're going to be able to search text in files like word documents and pdfs so this update is actually not part of the early release but this is a very important feature that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that to you guys. And this is actually also scheduled for GA in October of 2021. And then we also have something that's called advanced lookups, right? This is another feature that was already available to us, but we had to configure that, right? And I also did a video and an article on this. So going forward, this feature is actually gonna be enabled by default, right? For all of your users. So if you want to take a look on what that exactly is, I would definitely check out that article and or the video that I did for that. So now let's take a look at some of these items that were actually in that early release. So let's go ahead and get back to my environment. So the first thing that you probably immediately notice when you log in to any of those model-driven apps from Dynamics 365 is that the grid views or subgrids, any of those, they've been refreshed, right? So you can see that we have these little checkboxes now next to it, so it's a lot more clear which items are selected, obviously, right in a grid. And let me see, I can just go ahead and open a record here so that we take, can take a look at some of those grids on there. Let me go to servicing over here. So you can see that any of those subgrids also have that same refresher, right? It looks a little bit cleaner now when we are reviewing some of that grid data in Dynamics 365. Now, the other thing that you are going to notice is there's going to be an additional icon here. This is actually called a column editor, which is going to allow users to modify any view that they're on. So if I click on this, you can see that I can, you know, move some of these fields around, right? I can just go ahead and, and remove or move them around. I can remove them as well, right? I can say remove. Uh, but I can also add columns, right? So I can say, oh, I want to add the account number to that. And if I close here, you can see that the account number has now been added. So I'm going to move this back up. Now, the other thing that you can do here is you can actually add columns from related data, right? So maybe I wanted to put some information regarding the parent account on here or the billing account. I can do that, right? I can just go ahead and expand that. And then all of those fields are available to me. So let's say the billing account, which I don't have on this, so this is actually a bad example. Let me do the parent accounts. Oh, I also don't have that, but 
you guys kind of understand. Let me just grab here the territory field and do a description of the territory, or maybe even a name of the territory. I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and you can see here the description of the territory and the territory name now have been applied. So I'm gonna hit apply, and then you also see this little asterisk here on top, right? Basically telling me that this view has been edited. Now, I would love for there to be a way for me to now go ahead and, and save this view, but unfortunately that's not happening. And if I go ahead and navigate to a different view and I go back to the view that I just edited, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do, but you'll notice that, right, all those edits that I made, that they're gone now. The other thing I noticed is that if we had a view that was not to default, so let's just go ahead and go to active buildings, there used to be a button up top on the command board that said set this view to the default view. So that's no longer on the command bar, but you can see here that here is that option to set the current view as your default view. We used to have those little pins here as well, right, to, to be able to do that. So that has moved around as well. And then there's also an updated experience for mass updates. So I'm going to go back here to my active accounts. So let me go ahead and show you this. So let's say I want to update these two accounts. I'm going to click edit and you're going to see that this window opens and this is now the form that we are used to, right? The unified interface form. I can also go ahead and change to a different form, which is kind of nice. And then I can just start making my updates, right? But the nice thing here is that we're really getting that unified experience. We are no longer getting that pop-up of those legacy forms. Now, besides editing, there's also a refreshed process for, or I should say refreshed experience for the sharing of records. So again, let's just pretend I'm going to share both of these records, right? Again, I'm going to just go ahead and click on this case on my share button. And you can see here, this now again, pulls up a new, I almost want to say form on top of that view that I was in. So I can say, I'm going to share this with Teresa. And then you can see here, like I can even add more people. Let's go ahead and add Chris Driscoll as well. And then per person, I can give them permission. So she's gonna get right and share. And if I go to Chris, he's gonna get only right. Oh, he can't do that, of course, without read, duh. So then you just can hit share. And that is it. That is our new Refresh Share Records experience. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, everyone.